Chapter 10 is about infinite series and it feels really different because it's not about functions anymore, at least in the beginning. And it's about whether an infinite series converges. So whether you can add up infinitely many terms and come up with a number or whether infinite series, an infinite series diverges. So you add up the terms and you get some either infinity or, um, or maybe two different numbers when you add up infinitely many terms. So we'll look at some of those examples today um, and we'll talk about how you can decide whether a series converges or diverges by looking at the partial sums. You have experienced um, an infinite series that converges to a number. It still feels like it's not possible, but you have experienced it. Many of you have been in a situation where there are donuts out. You're in Minnesota, and you know Betty comes along and she wants to have her favorite white donut with sprinkles, but there's Lois, and Lois also likes the white donut with sprinkles, and so they'd like to share it, but they both remember about Fran in accounting, and Fran also really likes the white donut with sprinkles, so Betty and Lois say, you know what, we can split it and we'll save a piece for Fran. So Betty takes her piece, Lois takes her piece, they save a piece for Fran. Um, but then later on, after they've worked for a little bit, they need to come back to the break room and they see that Fran's piece is still sitting there and they say, well, you know, she's she'll come later, but for now she doesn't know that um, we already had some of this, so we're going to each take a third of what's left. So. I'll take some, Betty will take some, Lois will take some, we'll save some for Fran. And, you know, you can imagine Lois and Betty coming back infinitely many times and each time taking just a slice of what's left. And if they come back infinitely many times, I hope you agree that by the end of the day, they've really shared the donut and there's nothing left for Fran. So they each have taken a half of the donut. Um... Another way that this is maybe not something that you've experienced, but you might believe me if I tell you, if I give you one strip of something, but then I take half of it away from you, but then I give you back a third of what we originally started with, but then I take a fourth of what we originally started with away, but then I give you back a fifth of what we originally started with, but then I take a sixth away, and then I give you back a seventh, but then I take an eighth away. I hope you agree that eventually, we would converge to a number. I don't know what the number is, but I do know that um, I'm not going to go to infinity in this situation. Um, it's going to be some number smaller than one in this situation. So it's infinitely many terms, but it does actually converge to a number. Um, we also have a familiar uh, fraction that we could write as an infinite series of terms that we add together. So three tenths plus three hundredths plus three thousandths plus three ten thousandths. So if we write that in decimal form, 0 0.3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and so on, and we wind up with one third. So we have some familiarity with infinite number of terms added together that actually converges to a number. It just feels weird to think about it. Um, and so that's what this whole chapter is going to be about. So here's the mathy definition. An infinite series is a whole bunch of terms, infinitely many, in fact, that you add together. So this is just saying just that. Um, I want to remind you about summation notation in case that's been a while. Um, these little subscripts just mean the first term and the second term and the third term, and then we're going to add them up into, and we're going to do that infinitely many times. Um, our first test for deciding whether a series um, converges is we are going to do what's called the partial sum. So the partial sum is the first um, partial sum would just be the first term. The second partial sum would be the sum of the first two terms. The third partial sum would be the sum of the first three terms, and so on. Um, if those partial sums, if these numbers converge to a number, then 
our series converges as well. I'll show you what I mean by that. But this is our first test for whether a series converges. It's by looking at the partial sums. So here's our first example. Um, if I want the partial sums, the first partial sum would be 1, because 1 is the first term. The second partial sum would be 1 minus 1, which would be 0. The third one would be 1 minus 1 plus 1, which would be 1 etc. right? The fourth one would be 0 again, and the fifth one would be 1 again. And what we notice as we look at these, uh, this um, sequence, we notice that they're not converging. The sequence of partial sums is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. It's not converging. It's not getting going to a single number. It's going to two different numbers, but it's not converging. So unlike that example I had where I was adding a piece of rope and then taking away a piece of rope and then adding a piece of rope, that in that example, it did converge. But in this one, it's not converging. So um, that is looking at the partial sums. Um, so here's another example. So if we have our first partial sum would be 9 tenths. Our second partial sum, if I got a common denominator, would be uh, 90 plus 9, so 99 one hundredth. Our third one would be um, 999 one thousandths. And then it's a good idea to look at what would the nth one be. Well, the nth one would be 10 to the n in the denominator and 10 to the n take away one in the numerator. So now if I look at just this thing, does this thing have a limit? Does this converge? So I'm going to look at if I went out to infinity and I looked at my partial sums out to infinity, I would have 10 to the n minus 1 divided by 10 to the n. Um, one thing we could do is we could say, well, if we're going out to infinity, then we're going to just look at dominant terms, and the minus 1 is going to be not dominant at all. So I would say, well, this is limited as n goes to infinity of 10 to the n over 10 to the n, which would just be 1. So yes, this converges because the limit of the partial sums converges to 1. This is um, actually a fairly common question people will ask me. They'll say, Ms. Galt, is it true that 0.9 repeating really is 1? And yes, it is true that 0.9 repeating really is 1. All right. Um, this last example of partial sums is going to be this sum, 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth. So let's do that. Let's look at our partial sums. So, oops, I can't jump right to the nth term. i got to start with 1. <laughs> I'm not clever enough to jump right to the nth term. So the first partial sum would be a half. The second partial sum would be 3 fourths. The third one would be, well, be eighths. And it would be 4, 5, 6, 7 eighths. And the fourth one would be 16 ths. And I suspect it would be 15 sixteenths. Let's double check that that's true. 8 plus 4 would be 12, plus 2 would be 14, plus 1 would be 15. So now if I look at the nth term, well, that looks like the denominator is 2 to the n, and the numerator is 2 to the n minus 1. So very similar to the last example, right? So it looks like as n goes to infinity, our partial sums are going to go to 1. Because 2 to the n divided by 2 to the n would be 1. So this series converges to 1 because our partial sums converge to 1. If I look at this visually, I think that it, it makes a whole lot of sense. This is like a visual proof of what I just said. 
Um, if we take a piece of paper, cut it in half, cut the remaining paper in half, and cut the remaining paper in half, and I keep doing that, there's no way I'm going to get more than a piece of paper out of that. And eventually, if I really believe in infinity, I will get my full piece of paper. Okay, so this is our very first test that we have for convergence of a series. We look at the partial sums. Do they converge to a number? And if the answer is yes, then the series itself also converges to that number. All right, good luck, have fun.